So I probably need to explain what happened. I meant to publish this video a week after the last one and, uh, and life kind of got in the way. But here we are. We've neutralized the yokes, taped the broom handle across them so they stay that way. And now we're gonna check the alignment of everything. Starting with the flaps, uh, making sure that the uh, inboard end is, uh, is lined up perfectly with the wing root fillet right there. And you can see that, the, that they are. Uh, shake them a little bit, make sure they're, they're all the way retracted in the, uh, in the tracks. Now we're checking the aileron to make sure it's lined up with the flap. And the left one is uh, a little bit raised. Check the alignment of the right flap next and uh, make sure it's retracted all the way and in the proper position. And now we're going to check the right aileron to make sure it is lined up with the flap. And it's actually lowered a little bit there. And there's a little bit of a ding in that flap we probably need to work out. Okay, checking the outboard edge here. And, uh, and you can see that it's lowered a little bit. I can basically stick my fingertip in there so it's down in the slipstream. So we're going to pull off the inspection covers, gain access to the turnbuckles and then get up in there and fix that. So up in this hole here in the right wing, we've got the aileron crossover cable. It, uh, I can tell just by touching it that it's loose. I, uh, if I reach up in here and kind of simulate more tension on the cable, this right aileron will actually return back into the proper prepared position. So just doing that, I know things are not quite in rig. Right here on the, like I said, right here on the right wing, I've got a turnbuckle that runs, or that's on the crossover cable. There's also a turnbuckle on the direct cable that comes from the control wheel. Of course, if the tension's off in one, they're all connected, so the tension will be off in all of them. So got that going on. On the left wing over there, there's actually only a turnbuckle on the direct cable because the crossover cable already has one on this side, on the right wing. But we've already, gone in, uh, centered our yokes, and uh, taped a broom handle across them as a straight edge, a reference point. There's, there's really no lost motion between the two, so they're rigged together properly. If they don't line up, there's rigging behind there, uh, turnbuckles to adjust to make sure the two yokes center with each other. Um, actually have the control lock in and the broom handle taped across them just for good measure. Gonna go in and adjust our tensions, get everything lined up right. In order for this to be rigged correctly, I'm gonna poke it up in the hole here. In order for this to be rigged correctly, and uh, get it in focus, that uh, slot in that turn, or the slot in the bell crank needs to be centered around that stop, and the aileron needs to be in its proper neutral fared position. With the way these are put together, if the if at any time in the past that was rigged correctly, unless the bearings wear out, chances are, you know, unless the bearings wear out or the uh, control rod gets bent, chances are that rigging won't be off. And I've uh, I've uh, double checked to verify that in the proper fared position, both sides, the bell crank is in its is in the uh, a nice centered in the slot. So that part's good. So. Having, having troubleshot this now, we know that, uh, or at least I know that uh, my cable tensions are off, which is affecting the rigging of the ailerons. And so I'm gonna go in and pull those, pull those safeties off, readjust everything so that everything's nice and, uh, nice and tight according to the spec. And uh, that'll help our, help our ailerons be rigged properly and uh, whatever speed we're losing there, we'll hopefully get it back. All right, so we'll do that and we'll check back with you later. All right, this is instantaneous to you, but this is actually a week later. Um, I didn't get a chance to go and, uh, and test fly the airplane until a couple of nights ago, took it out on a cross country and uh, the left wing heavy tendency was much better. Um, it wasn't perfect because I actually made a small a small error when I was rigging so the left aileron the Inboard edge of the aileron matches up matched up comp perfectly with the uh, with the flap and so did and the outboard edge or the outboard tip uh, Lined up perfectly with the wing tip 
On the right hand wing, it wasn't quite the case. Um, there's a slight bit of a difference. And so if you line it up with the, in, you know, the inboard edge with the, uh, with the flap, then you can, uh, unfortunately, I don't know, there's a little bit of a difference. I don't know if the wing's got a slight, you know, a little bit more washout in it, or if that, or if that aileron's got a little bit, a little bit different angle to it. There's no damage or anything I can tell. But uh, so if you line up with the inboard edge with the flap perfectly, then the outboard edge is, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or so, a little bit low in reference to the wingtip. I actually made a mistake and I, uh, you know, the book, I couldn't find uh, any guidance to the contrary. And I was trying to think of the aerodynamics of how it's been flying. So I went and I lined up the outboard edge with the wingtip, which left a slight mismatch with the flap. Took it out and flew it. It flew beautifully actually. Um, but if you release the, the yoke and, uh, and let the ailerons return to neutral on their own, the yoke was actually offset slightly to the left. And, uh, and that tells me that the slipstream over the, over the right aileron was actually displacing everything so that the yoke would be, you know, just, just a hair to the left. Um, trimmed out nice, flew hands off and that sort of thing. But uh, I knew that rigging wasn't exactly quite right. So I went back uh, today and I re-rigged, right? You know, I could do everything on the right wing because the crossover cable and the, uh, and the direct cable and the crossover cable that feeds both ailerons and the uh, direct cable is all, all in the right wing. So just pulled off those two inspection covers over there, loosened the crossover cable slightly. I took the safety wire off, loosened the crossover cable slightly, tightened the uh, direct cable. So what I learned in this process is that if you tighten the direct cable, it has a tendency to lower that aileron. If you tighten the crossover cable, it has a tendency to raise both ailerons. So, uh, with my stick across the with, with my stick across the yokes, taping those in a neutral position, I uh, went ahead and adjusted that, rechecked the tensions to make sure we got the appropriate amount of tension on it, resafetyed those, and uh, now I'm pretty confident that uh, well, the aileron rigging is right, the flaps rigging rigging is correct. Um, we're still not quite as fast as the book speed was, but I did notice in, and this is one of the things that uh, that we'll we'll go we'll dive a little deeper in and later is is uh, so if you're, you know, in, in this you know the 210 is is you know what uh, you know one of the higher performance airplanes. It, when you're on the top end of the performance range for this airplane, any little bit of drag really has a market effect. And I, I was having this discussion with a with a friend of mine, Dave. Uh, yesterday and I said if I let the airplane fly neutral and center everything up it's probably 10 almost 10 knots faster than it is if I uh, if I put the control input to roll it level and and, and then trim it to fly straight so I know and you know, that may be a little bit of an exaggeration but not by much I mean if you put the control inputs in you can watch the I was using the GPS ground speed at the time you put the control inputs in, you watch the GPS ground speed ratchet down, you know, five, six, seven, eight knots, and then uh, release the control inputs and uh, just fly, just fly it so the ball is centered, no matter what the air, you know, I mean, you know, within reason. And uh, you'll notice that uh, there's there's a significant uh, a speed difference there um, because that, you know, that those last couple of knots are basically all drag dependent. So whatever drag that you have, you know, the faster you go, the uh, if you double the double the speed, the drag is four times as much, requires four times as much horsepower to keep you going. You know that speed. So, you know, there's a careful balance at the top there. And and I'm not I'm 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 by in no means an aerodynamics expert, but uh, but uh, that's that's the way I've learned and that's the way I've been taught along the way. So anyway, ailerons are done. I mean, we're still not as fast as the book says we ought to be, but I know there's there's a couple of things that need uh, need attention. I'm probably probably not going to chase any more left wing uh, left wing heavy tendencies because we've tuned most of that out. And in fact, you know, this next flight may uh, may prove that it's tuned all out. If it if it isn't all tuned out, the the next step would be to actually adjust the angle of incident on on the wings. Um, 
in some of the other 100 series Cessnas that I've worked on. And this this uh, early 210 is the same way. There's some concentric bushings on the aft spar on each wing, and you can actually adjust the, uh, the angle of incidence of the wing. Um, they tell you to start at the first one, you know, they start, uh, and they tell you to start at the left, the heavy wing first and tune that a little bit. You can, you can roll those concentric bushings and, uh, and change the incidence a little bit raising the, or lowering the trailing edge of the heavy wing, which would, in, in, in essence, uh, increase the angle of incidence, cause more lift to, uh, to be uh, created on that wing. And then if that doesn't completely cure it, then you can actually uh, uh, raise the uh, leading edge, or raise the trailing edge on the wing you know, that wants to raise on you, and you can, you can lower the angle of incidence and, and cause a little bit less lift on that side. But, I don't think we're there. I'll be honest with you. It uh, when when we f we flew almost two hours on uh, Wednesday night, uh, the boys and I together, and uh, it was you know nice thing about flying at night is it's super smooth, so the bumps and stuff aren't uh, aren't uh, aren't affecting your 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 flying at all. I mean it, the plane the plane flew like it was on rails, and uh, and we were practically there. So. The problem with the, the, I mean, I would do it if it was worse. And like I said, it may be all cured by now, but uh, if it was worse, I would go ahead and, and, uh, and tweak those, uh, those wing bushings slightly. Yeah, I mean, adjust the wing bushings slightly. But uh, pro, uh, the 200 series Cessna at the trailing edge, there's not a whole lot of room to get in there. And uh, I, I may be, by disturbing things in there, I, I may be actually creating more work than a, than that is really worth it. I don't know. Time will tell. We're early in our ownership of this airplane, and 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 there's there's probably things that we can do. Uh, another thing I need to check is to this this plane has the uh, valley gear door removal uh, STC on it, so the main gear wells are are have the doors have been taken off, so those those are kind of open like a newer like a newer G10 would be. Um, and the nose gear doors are now mechanically operated. I need to jack the nose wheel and, and or I mean jack the airplane and uh, double check the rigging on the nose gear doors because I don't think, uh, I suspect that they're not completely closed when the nose gear is retracted. And of course that would that'd be a great place to create a bunch of extra drag right there on the nose. And, uh, and uh, anyway, but that's, a, that's, that's another video for another time. We will. T I'm gonna. I'm gonna call this good now. After I do in the paperwork, we're gonna. We're uh, gonna enjoy it for a little while, and uh, I will chase other issues as time goes on. This video may end up being a little long. I apologize for that. Please like and subscribe. Give us some comments if some things you'd like to see. Um, primarily, you know, towards my experience here on Cessnas. Um, welcome your feedback and comments. I, uh, uh, it's, this has been a lot of fun. Apologize for not getting the video out last weekend, but, uh, you know, life gets in the way sometimes and, and that's kind of the way it goes. But, uh, we will, uh, we will, uh, check you later. And, uh, that probably wraps up this episode of this old airplane. Have a great day.